Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Daily Faith Builder. Happy Monday morning. Um, this week, we are looking at this idea that Jesus' hope for the world is a vibrant church. We're just going to break that down all weekend long. Also, we drift and we become distant from God when our work, our goals, our projects become disconnected from the greatest building project on earth, which is the church. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, Jesus says to the disciples that he will build his church upon this rock, speaking of Peter's profession, he will build his church and the gates of Hades, of hell, will not prevail against his church. And I think we all have experienced that chasm between Sunday morning and Monday morning, the chasm between church and our work. Um, in other words, following after our vocation and our work that, um, that we're called to. And we pour so much energy, oftentimes we get projects, things we're passionate about, uh, the amount of hours we spend at our work, building a company or whatever it may be. And there's a frustration we all have experienced <clears throat> at different times in our lives where we, we come to a place of frustration, we come to a place of, of lacking fulfillment. And, and down deep inside, if we really uh, kind of unearth that struggle, it's this, this struggle of how do I connect my work, my goals, my projects, the things I'm passionate with, with God and His purposes in the world. And the way to do that is is all connected to our relationship with his church, which is the greatest building project on the face of the earth. Um, during this time of COVID, I think one of the things that God is doing is he is restoring to his church and to his people a right view of what church really is and what it should be. Um, and if we don't have that, there is this growing chasm of distance uh, and we don't only drift, but we also become distant in our relationship with God uh, in the midst of all that. If there's chasm um, between our work, what we do, our projects, and what God is doing. Now, the greatest project on the face of the earth is the building project of the church. That is all throughout Scripture, God's primary point of concern. He moves the nations and does everything to uh, carry about his purposes for his people, whether it's Israel in the Old Testament or whether it's his people, the remnant, the church, birthing that in the New Testament. Again, I'm not talking about the building project of a building or a church building. I'm talking about the people of God, the community, the ecclesia, the gathering, right, of, of God's people. And so two questions that will help us kind of dive into this issue. The first one is, could it be that the church as we know it um, during, has been preventing um, church as God wants it? Could it be that church as we know it has been preventing what God really wants? We need to really ask the Lord, Lord, what do you have? What's the Spirit saying to the churches, right, during this time? And the second question is, could it be that the discipleship that we know is preventing the discipleship that Jesus desires for his church? Someone has said, um, uh, I don't know, it was a while ago, but it's a profound statement that you can build the church and people will come and some disciples might be made. But if you build disciples, you make disciples, the church will be built. And this is clearly what Jesus has modeled for us in the Great Commission itself, go make disciples. And um, we need to understand the context of that. So two things this morning to think about. One is what is your connection to the church? How is your vocation, your plans, your goals, uh, what you're passionate about, how is that connected to the church, the greatest building project on the face of the earth? And here's what God wants to do. When he saves you into a relationship with Jesus is he opens your eyes, gives you an eternal perspective, and he calls you the light and the salt in the world. And you're to take that into your area of vocation, your area of work, and you're to look at your work, your goals, and everything, your projects with a whole different light, with an eternal perspective, not just a worldly perspective. And uh, it takes, how do we do that, is the big question, and we do it through discipleship. Jesus, um, in this account, in Matthew 16, he took the disciples away to Caesarea Philippi, and it was a very pagan place, and he sat there teaching them as they looked at this huge cave in the ground that was known as the gates of hell. It's a very pagan place. And he called them. He got away from all the distractions of ministry and he had time to speak right into their life. And he asked them point blank questions. Who do you say that I am? And he taught them deeply about the kingdom. It's the first time that he told them and shared with them that he's going to, his mission was to go to the cross. And that his idea of messiahship just rocked their world as a whole different avenue. 
uh, of what that looks like. And so this idea of discipleship um, is critical. We must restore a transformational, intentional discipleship to the church. And so I ask you, who are your disciples? Have you been discipled? Do you, are you a part of a small group of men or a small group of women where somebody's leading that intentionally as you all come together to really wrestle with the scriptures to see how you can best follow Jesus and become like him? And is there time where you get away to, uh, to go to those deeper places where you ask each other those big questions of how attached are we to the world? Um, is my work and what I'm doing with my vocations, my projects and my plans, are they connecting to the greatest project in the world, which is uh, the building of God's church? And ask those deeper questions about where we're at with God, what, not just what we believe, right? But um, also, what are we actually living and experiencing? These things are critical. They're fleshed out. The primary avenue of transformation in our life is a discipleship group within the context of a healthy church. And you can't have a healthy, vibrant church without a healthy, vibrant, right, discipleship. So I hope that encourages you um, this morning. Um, have an awesome week.